Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking to you about knowing your triggers, right? Knowing your triggers. When I talk about triggers, I'm talking about what triggers you to do something one way or the other, right? And um, let me tell you why I decided to do this episode. The other day, I found myself in a conversation uh, with a couple of my coworkers, not so much as a conversation, but we're just going back and forth when um, one of my coworkers came into the office and handed me a handful of stuff to put in the drawer and then handed, you know what I'm saying, our supervisor something and uh, told him, you know, you might be able to use this, put it up or whatever the case may be, right? And when I saw him do that, when he handed me the stuff, I said, man, you a hoarder, man, you know, because he always has stuff put up. You know, the, the, the weirdest thing, string, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the little mess that go under your door, stuff that you would think like, okay, why didn't you throw this in the trash? You know, why do you still have this stuff? You know what I mean? Uh, all kinds of stuff. Two or three hundred ink pens here and there, whatever the case may be. It's just weird stuff that he would have with nobody else has gotten anything. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I called him a hoarder. He said, no, I'm not a hoarder. I'm not a hoarder. So our other coworker, he said, and he chimed in. He said, it takes one to know one. I said, nah. I said, you can call me a lot of things, but you can't call me a hoarder. You know what I'm saying? I don't do that. You know what I mean? I have a few things here and there, but I don't clutter up places with stuff that I know I'm not going to be using, uh, things that are really, you know, irrelevant to what's going on in my life. At this particular time, you know, I do my spring cleaning every year and get rid of stuff. I try to purge stuff. You know what I'm saying? So this individual, what he said to me and the way he said it triggered something in me, right? And this is what he said. He said, everybody's got something wrong with them but you, Joe. Everybody's got something wrong with them but you. And it wasn't just how he said it. I mean, it just it wasn't just what he said. It was also... How he said that, it really triggered something in me that made me feel like I was back in grade school or a freshman in high school. And that's important because here's why. During that time, I remember, man, that I don't know what it was that I was going through, but I would do almost anything unbeknownst to the people around me to be accepted. If I was around the good kids and they were doing work and all this and that, I was too. But if I was around the bad kids and they were doing bad stuff, I was too. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to be accepted by whoever it was that I thought was my peers. And I dumbed down myself in school. Sometimes the teacher would be asking a question and I would know the answer. But the people that I was trying to be cool with and accepted by and sit near they wouldn't participate in what was going on in class. They wanted to be disruptive and talk. So I did the same thing. But I kind of like straddled the fence. I would talk to them and whisper when the teacher turned her back to write on the chalkboard as opposed to doing it in her face because I really didn't feel comfortable doing it, but I wanted them to accept me. You know what I'm saying, y'all. You know what I'm saying. So at the end of the day, I found myself feeling like that again when we were in the conversation about being a hoarder. And when I realized what was going on to me, I said, "Uh uh-uh. I'm not going to allow myself to conform to whatever image that this individual has of me so that I will be accepted by him. Now, I don't even think that he was doing it in a malicious way, but maybe he was. I don't know. Maybe he didn't even realize that he was being malicious, you know, because this is not the first time him and I had uh, disagreements about different things or whatever the case may be. And he would always he's he's lately he's had a habit of saying things to me like that. You know, you think, you know, everything or you uh, ain't got nothing wrong with you. Clearly, clearly, if he uh, has heard about any of my shows, he would know that I got many problems. I got boatloads of problems. But what I don't do, I don't allow my problems, my insecurities, my shortcomings, my fears, I don't deflect that onto somebody else. I don't rely on somebody else being, feeling rather, mistreated to make me feel like 
I'm okay. And that's what a lot of people do. And that's why I say it's important to know your triggers. Because sometimes people, they might know what they're doing when they say stuff to you. They might not. It's irrelevant because you feel the same. You feel the same when somebody says or does these things to you. It makes you feel inadequate if you're not aware of what's going on. It reminded me of back in high school, in elementary school, when I would do anything to be accepted. Anything. Go against everything my grandparents had raised me to do. I would do anything. And it goes back even further than that because, you know, we had a conversation not too long ago uh, when I took the side of, you know, we were talking, let me tell you what we were talking about. We were talking about this guy that has mental health issues and um, he's had a chance to go home a couple of times. And every time he gets close to being able to go home, he does something to jeopardize that. You know, and and when I say he has mental health issues, he has mental health issues, y'all, for real. So the same particular guy, he said, now that's just a crutch. He uses that as an excuse, you know what I'm saying, to not do right and so on and so forth. And I said, well, wait a minute. When did we get to a point to where it's an expiration date on you being depressed or on you having whatever mental issue that you have. There's no expiration date on those types of things. You can get treatment, you can take medicine, and all of those types of things, but those things are going to be there with you for the rest of your life. And at times in your life, you're going to be triggered to do certain things because of it, if you're not aware. And sometimes, even if you are aware, the feeling, the anxiety is so overwhelming that it just overtakes you. That's not an excuse. That's trauma, wielding its ugly head. That's what that is. And I really had an issue with that. So I said all the things that I've just said to you, I said to him, and he said, well, that's just your opinion. I said, you're absolutely right, that's your opinion. But we had an audience, y'all. We had some people in the room that I respect to the fullest. I mean, absolutely to the fullest. And one of them is in that field. You know what I mean? And I thought that this individual was only playing to the crowd. And I don't do that. I don't play to the crowd. So I said what I said the way I said it. And I was a little aggressive. I'll admit that because I was so passionate about that because I I even used myself to illustrate that. I said, when I'm having an anxiety attack, and, and it happens at the weirdest times, you know, I can be in front of a crowd of people. We can be in the gym in front of a lot of people doing something or whatever, and it would happen. I'm not using that as an excuse to leave the area or not go to work or not, you know what I'm saying, be uh, the fullest, uh, fully engaged in whatever's going on. Uh, I'm not using that as an excuse to get out of anything at all. I'm going through what I'm going through when I'm going through it because of what has been triggered in me. And to say something like that, that really got under my skin. So I laid that out and now, and I was telling them that this is not right to even say. It's not cool. So at the end of that, he said, oh, that's what you think, Joe. That's your opinion. I'm gone. And got up and just walked out, which is cool with me, which is cool with me. Because, you know, sometimes I can get, you know what I'm saying, a little aggressive with my conversation and all of this and that. But at the end of the day, I was trying to point out that, um, you know, I don't play to the crowd. And I painted the picture like this because I want you to understand that we, me and this guy, we've gone back and forth before. And I considered him, I still consider him to be a friend, you know. Uh, but we just happen to disagree on a lot of stuff lately. A lot of stuff. And I think that when he's in front of certain people, he says certain things. When he's in front of other people, he says other things. And it has just really started to bother me because he's saying some things that I've heard him say the direct opposite to. And I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you saying it? Have you matured and come to this understanding or are you playing to the crowd? Because here's the thing about me being triggered the other day when he said that everything, everybody's got something wrong with him but me. This is what it triggered me. It's like, okay, you want me to act a certain way so you can feel like you're right about something 
or to make whatever makes you feel comfortable. But then I can't be my authentic self because me being my authentic self is threatening to you. It makes you feel some kind of way towards me. And that's how I acted in school. Even in my adult years, even when I was uh, in rotation, you know what I'm saying? I, at times, would find myself trying to please others. And I've gotten to a point in my life where I'm just not doing that anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not going to be a mean person, but I'm not going to make myself uncomfortable to make you uncomfortable, meaning psychologically uncomfortable. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sacrifice my mental health so that you can feel good about yourself. I'm not doing that. Why should I? What do y'all think? You know, have you ever been in a situation like that where somebody wants you to act the way they want you to act versus the way you actually feel? That's hurtful. It, it was to me. It was to me. And I just wanted to throw that out there. This is a real quick one, y'all. It's just something to, that I want you to think about. You know, be your authentic self. Surround yourself with people, man, that uh, respect you for you, even when you disagree with them. You know? Surround yourself with people that don't say, don't say things to try to pull you down, but to build you up. You can have a difference of opinion with somebody about anything and everything. But don't let... Um, that person make you feel like, you know, that you are wrong in the sense that you should uh, submit to what it is that they want you to, to submit to. Don't do that. Don't do that. Listen to me when I say what I'm about to say. Prison is full of people that have done that. We decided at some point along the way not to be our true, authentic selves. We decided some, at some point along the way not to speak up, not to speak out, not to say, no, nah, I'm not feeling that. We decided at some point that it's best to go along to get along. And look what it got us. Look what it got us. Be your authentic self. Be true to you. Be virtuous, be loving, be kind. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.